Hey winners, I'm learning. <laughs> I wanted to say, hey guys, well, welcome back live at five. I'm so, so happy every single time that I can share the word you don't know. I wanted to say I'm super excited, but I said it so many times. So I'm so happy and I give all the honor to our Papa God. He is the greatest. Oh, let's just worship him because he's so good. We honestly have a true and good and faithful Papa God. He's never, he cannot be unfaithful. Hey, Mary. <laughs> thank you so much for watching. Well, thank you so much, everyone. I have to thank you every single day that people are watching these videos, sharing them, placing them on their Facebook on, uh, pages. And thank you for everyone who went to my YouTube account subscribe and gave my videos a thumbs up and it's not because of me i want more of the word out there that people know that they can be healed delivered saved you know that jesus he still is the same yesterday today and forever so i just want the word out you know how many things i find on the internet on youtube on facebook and it's it's just rubbish <laughs> it's it's no good and people they share it and they tell each other go and watch this little on a video clip and it's just someone dying or someone you know hurting and they're laughing about it and you know those kind of things and i just want to word out so thank you very very much for doing that and i want to on uh every day that i can and i if i don't forget it um yes just, just Thank someone especially that supports my ministry. And today, I really want to thank Stephanie. Well, I will not say your last name, but thank you so much, Stephanie, for all your support to my ministry, for every single time that you watch, every single video that you place on your Facebook page. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. So, Stephanie, just be blessed in Jesus' name. Well, I'm Cindy Mezas. I'm your peach teacher and life transformation coach. Thank you for watching. And we have a new topic today. But first, I wanted to tell you because we were talking about write the vision down on tablets, you know, make it clear, explain it, make it clear, and those kind of things and your goals. Well, I've put up a vision board. I got more vision boards, but I put one up and I also and I have uh, certain visions that I really, really want to see accomplished. You cannot see them clearly, but I will tell it one time. So let's get into the word because I still meet a lot of people, a lot of Christians that don't understand this thing that I'm going to talk about. So right now I'm speaking that you're not interrupted, that you get a revelation, a deep understanding of this, these things that I'm gonna share with you teach with uh, teach today in the name of jesus no distractions right now because this is a very i think it's a delicate subject well listen to me i named this video it's already a done deal and it's so difficult for so many people to understand what it means but listen to me closely we serve a papa god and when you go to Isaiah, you can find it. He tells us that he declares the end from the beginning. You know, the Hebrew language, language, they write from right to left. We read from left to right and we write from left to right. But they do it from on a right to left. That was how it was supposed to be. And Papa God, he declares the end from the beginning already so if he's a god that declares the end from the beginning and he does how come we as christians still think that we still need to get healed we still need to get the prosperity we still need to get to whatever the thing may be i just took out on a certain subjects but we still think it's gonna happen someday. Well, someday is not a day. It's not a Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, you know? It's someday, but when it's someday, maybe I'm not here someday. So that's so strange. You know, Papa God, he's so detailed. I already told you, just go and read the book of Exodus 
and just read those books in the in the uh, old testament and you see how detailed he was when he was talking about under uh, the tabernacle he didn't just say and build me a tabernacle and that was it no he came with measurements he came with what kind of animal skins he came with what type of wash basin it needed to be the gold he already had at a uh, uh, place skilled people so people who were skilled in making certain types of things he was so detailed he already provided those things because by making that tabernacle and i'm just talking about a tabernacle right now but by making the tabernacle moses needed all these things well first thing that papa did he 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 showed moses a picture of the tabernacle because he told him what i showed you when he was on the mountain so he showed him the tabernacle that's vision we already talked about vision and then he told moses what he needed to build that tabernacle you know there was a tabernacle they had to uh, now fold back up so to speak and carry it to the next place they would camp out so papa god he's so inventive he's a great inventor you know that he made a carryable tabernacle <laughs> i think he's so great but what he did and this is it's very profound but a lot of people a lot of christians they just read the bible just oh i, I read genesis i read exodus i read Levi leviticus i read the whole bible wait a minute wait a minute did you understand what he was doing that's what i'm trying to tell you today because with this tabernacle every single thing moses needed was already there did you think about that? It was already there. All the animals, the skin of certain animals that he needed, like goat skin or, you know, the, the things they use. The animals, Moses did not have to pray for those animals, make the animals, create those animals. No, Papa God had already placed them on this earth and then not only that he every the gold that was needed for the tabernacle papa god had already placed it every single thing the wood uh the, the coloring you know because they had uh he wanted certain colors you know everything was already there so when papa god tells you that by his stripes you were healed do you think that you need to be good, to um, do whatever, to get healed? Or do you think, just like with a tabernacle, and the tabernacle, I mean, that was a portable tabernacle. He made every single detail that was there, hey, Rosia, that was there, oh, so many hearts back, Every single thing that Moses needed for the tabernacle was there. And do you think that you, as his beloved child, in whom he's well pleased, that you have to fight, that you have to do something to get healing? And he needs to make healing for you? No, healing is already here. <laughs> And I know some people say, yes, I know, but I don't know. Well, that's the thing I'm going to talk about. That's our new topic. Because if God thinks highly enough about a portable tabernacle, that he's so detailed, don't you think he's so detailed about your life? Do you really think that he wants you to be, I don't know what your problem is or what kind of situation, to be without a job, to be unsuccessful, to be cursed, to be sick? to be uh, in lack or in poverty, to be um, incarcerated in your mind, to have mental issues, whatever the thing is that is happening in your life that's negative, do you think that God wants you in that situation? Or do you think he still needs to provide the thing? No, he has already done it. And I'm just giving you certain fun facts because I already told you in Isaiah you can find that the Lord, he declares the end from the beginning. And listen to this. Oh, I already told you about the Hebrew language. I, I just love it. I'm not a Hebrew scholar. So please, if I say something wrong, I'm not a Hebrew scholar. But this is what I found. You guys, you know already winners that I love 
the book of Genesis, but I love every single Bible book. So, and uh, listen to this, because I already told you, there are in the Hebrew alphabet 22 uh, letters, but all these letters also have symbols, pictures, and these pictures, they also have numbers. So Papa God, he knew us so well, he knew that we will always think in pictures. So what happens here? He says in Genesis 1:1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Well, I told you that the Lord declares the end from the beginning. Everything is already a done deal. Everything you and I need, whatever it is, he has already placed it here. It's already a done deal. And I know some of you might say, no, Cindy, because I still need the money. I still need the house. I still need the, the baby boy. I still need the, the jacket or whatever the thing is. Well, but I'm not lying. It's in the word. Listen to this. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Well, when you start with in the beginning, it's Bereshit. There are like seven words. So that's completion, perfect. And those seven words, Bereshit, when you go and, and search those words out, you know what it says? And I had to write it down. <laughs> so I wrote it down for you. It says the Son of God is destroyed willingly by his own hand. That is what actually is stated in Genesis 1, 1. Well, there was your time to shout. It was so good. The Son of God is destroyed willingly by his own hand. And what happened on the cross? The Son of God was devoured, destroyed, but by his own hand, he willingly gave up his spirit for you and I. Oh man, don't you think that's so great? So the Lord declared the end from the beginning. Genesis 1, he already declared what was going to happen. And mind you, this is just seven words. I want to know what is in the Bible that I cannot see clearly because I don't have the great knowledge of the Hebrew language. But the Hebrew scholars, they know what it says when they go and find things out because everything always points to Jesus. So I just, I'm here this week to tell you it's already a done deal. But I know this subject, it's not that easy to grasp, but I keep on speaking that you can grasp it, that you get understanding of it. So everything is already done deal. Jesus went to that cross. And the Lord already told us in Genesis 1, 1, now you know, I've told you, that the, uh, the Lord God, or Jesus, he was destroyed willingly by his own hands, and it happened on that cross. And you know what he said when he went on the cross? It is finished. Well, what was finished? What was finished? Everything that you and I needed, it is finished. You know why he had to do that? Because when you read in Genesis 1, 3, you see that Eve ate from the fruit. I already talked about that in one of the videos. And her husband, Adam, also. He loved Eve so much. He thought, I know she's going to die because he knew what the Lord said was true. And then he also ate of the fruit. And then all kinds of things happened because they gave their authority to Satan. And that's how Satan become the little God of this world. Well, Jesus came and he took it all back. And then the Bible tells us all authority in heaven and earth and under the earth is given to Jesus. And you know what Jesus did? He gave us back that authority. So he gave us even more than in the beginning of Genesis, what they, what they gave to Adam and Eve. So everything you need, listen good. Everything you need, it's already provided for. Jesus, he is your land of Canaan. Jesus, he is your provision. You know, when Abraham went to sacrifice his son Isaac, after he had waited so long for his son and he got his son, and then the Lord said, I want you to sacrifice your son Isaac, and he did. When Abraham, you, you see in all the movies and those kind of things, you see him like, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to do this, my son, you know. But actually that wasn't true because we cannot find it in the word that Abraham was crying, that Abraham was in despair, that Abraham was whatever. No, Abraham knew, Papa, God gave me Isaac. 
he will give me Isaac back. But he had so much fear of God. He has so much respect, so much love for Papa God. He went and did it. But you know what happened? When he wanted to offer up Isaac, the Lord spoke, don't hurt the boy. So he never, ever harmed his own son, Isaac. Why didn't God want that? Because the Lord only wanted to see the motivation of his heart so that Papa God could send his own son also. And what happened was there was a ram caught in the thicket. The sacrificed lamb. And mind you, Isaac asked his papa, he said, Oh, oh no, papa, we're going to sacrifice. But where is the sacrificial lamb? Where is the, the, the offer? But Abram never told him, you're the offer. And then there was a ram caught in the thicket. Now, let me ask you, wouldn't you see a ram caught in the thicket? I mean, Abram had to look up. And there, the, and there the, the ram was, I say lamb, I mean ram. The ram was caught in the thicket. Wouldn't you see it? Wouldn't you hear it? Because if the, the, a ram is caught in the thicket, you know, his horns, he's stuck between an, um, an, uh, those uh, trees and those kind of things. And he would like want to get out. So you would hear him like moving and those kind of things. Abram never heard it. Abram never saw it until Papa said, look up. And then he looked and he saw a ram caught in the thicket. Well, that ram was already there before Abraham tried to offer up and sacrifice his son. It was already a done deal. The provision already was there. Well, if we go through Genesis, because I have to build this thing up, otherwise you will not understand me. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form, void, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Holy Spirit was hovering over the voice of the waters of the deep. And then the Lord God said, light be, light was. I always tell um, uh, my, my uh, um, children and everyone uh, when I preach, I always say to them, when he said light be, he spoke Jesus into being because Jesus, he's the true light. And this light that he's speaking of is not, not comes from stars or the moon or the sun because he never made the sun, the moon or the stars at this time. So he spoke Jesus into being light be and light was. And then he started, Hey, Stephanie. <laughs> so, uh, no. and then he started to to put things on this earth, every single thing that we needed, and we can find it. So just go with me. It's a lot. So I will not uh, 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 search everything out, talk about everything, but here. And God divided the light from the day and, um, and darkness, and he called darkness, he called night, light, he called day. So the evening and the morning were the first day. So he made evening and he made morning. You and I, we don't have to create an evening or a morning. We don't have to create, oh, let it be dark so that I can sleep. Oh, let it be daylight so I can get up. No, we don't have to do it. He always provided for us those kind of things. And then God said, let it be a firmament in the midst of the waters. Let it divide the waters from the waters. Thus God made the firmament and, and divided the waters which were under the firmament. And it was so. And there was morning and it was the second day. Then God said, and then he just, you know, starts to creating all these things. And then he says, uh, then God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb that yields seed and the fruit tree that yields fruit according to its kind, whose seed is in itself on the earth. And it was so. And I just want to take this out, uh, out of everything because he does something here that we still see. Because if you go outside, you will never ever worry about, Ooh, I wonder if today the trees are floating in the air. No, they stick to the places where they need to be. And these trees, they were made in Genesis 1. And we still have the trees. And there's so much benefits to the trees and all those in the herb uh, yielding seeds and the green grass. And it's still here. He already provided for oxygen. You know, he already provided for every single thing that we needed. And he provided it in a way that it keeps on keeping on, keeping on, keeping on, remaining 
until the day comes that he will renew the whole on the earth and the heaven and the earth that then we're going to have a whole new heaven and a whole new earth but i just want to point things out i'm layering a cake here that it's already done everything is a done deal he already provided every single thing that you and i need so if it is that you need grocery, grocery money, if it is that you need housing, if it is that you need or in need for help for your ministry, if it is that you're in need of a husband or a wife, is it that you're in need of, I got wealthy certifications on my vision board. He has already provided that. Well, let's go to my vision board. I've got on my vision board, you cannot see it, but I got on my vision board, well deserved vacations i i named it that and then i placed i don't know if you can see it if i get my let me get it a little bit more in front i try to hold it steady and otherwise i'm so sorry so <laughs> i'm just letting you in so um well deserved vacation Yes, and I want to go to uh, Spain, Gran Canaria, and Italy, and uh, those kind of places. Do you think I need to pray to make or create Italy? No, Italy is already made. Do I need to create Spain? No, Spain, Gran Canaria, it's already made. Do I need to figure out how to get there? No, there are already planes made. You know, everything the Lord has already placed for us, he just placed in me the desire to go because he told me, he said, Cindy, what is it that you want? Just ask me and I will give it to you. If you ask in my name, I will give it to you. He wants us to prosper. He told us. So everything that you and I need, it's already a done deal. I already told you if it's done, it's done. He is all, he has already provided all these things. And now I'm talking about like a vacation, but Let's talk about healing. <coughs> Do you truly think, sorry. Do you truly think that this great, great God who already provided for planes, I just <laughs> did something, <clears throat> already provided for planes, already provided Italy, Spain, and everything that you and I need, and then he wouldn't provide for your health or your healing? No. No. He already provided those things too through the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross because Jesus, he didn't stay on the cross. He didn't stay there. We shouldn't stay there. I value the cross and I appreciate so much what the Lord Jesus did for me and for you on the cross. But then he rose again. He's the resurrected, risen Lord. Why is he, why did he rise from the dead? Why did he do that to see to it that you and I get what he died to give us. And it's all through his grace. So there's nothing that I can do. I cannot be a good, good girl. And then he gives me my health and my healing. No, it's provided already. That's why he told in the Old Testament, he said, he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. But then in the New Testament, after Jesus had come, you know what he said? By his stripes. You were healed. So now it's already done. It's a done deal. People, this is a time to shout and just be so happy and just get in a rejoicing mode because you cannot fight to get the healing. You cannot cleanse yourself enough to get the healing. You cannot do so many good deeds to get the healing. You cannot buy the healing. You cannot strive to get the healing. No, you have to receive the healing because it's already done. How can you receive something if it's not there? And that would be strange. So if you would ask me, Cindy, um, can you come to my house? And then I'm in your house. And then you're like, oh, Cindy, I wish you could come to my house. I wish, but I'm standing in your house. I would looking like, what's wrong with this person? I am here. She asked me or he asked me and I'm here. Why is this person still asking if I can come to the house? Because the person never received it. Never received me. That, it looks strange, right? I'm not crazy, but it looks strange. 
And that's the way a lot of people are. And it looks so strange. Papa is like, I'm certainly sure. I'm so sure that I'm so sure I can never lie. That I sent my son Jesus and we just heard. He told the end from the beginning in Genesis 1.1. And Jesus, he said, it is finished. Doesn't Cindy understand? Doesn't she know that I always pro already provided for a healing? And when I receive it and I say, oh, Papa God, thank you so much for healing me. I receive your healing now. I receive it in my soul and I command it into manifestation in my body. You know what will happen? The health and the healing springs forth. And you know what is so great? It's not just the health and the healing. It's also creative miracles. There are a lot of people. They lost arms, legs, and, uh, fingers, hair, eyes, teeth, all those kind of things. Do you know that he has already also provided for those kind of things? But because we are so much in unbelief, we are watching unbelief. We are listening to unbelief. We are uh, speaking unbelief. We are letting unbelief just flood our houses, our minds, and everything that we're doing, that it's so difficult for us to understand. It's already a done deal. I just need to receive it. So the Lord has healing provided for you, creative miracles provided for you, and uh, vacations provided for you, and all those things that you want and need, I also have on my board. I want to have uh, to go to more subscribers because then I can get the word out to more people and more people can get blessed, saved, delivered, healed, and all those kind of things. So that's a vision that I have written down. So. I just need you to grasp it because I know it looks so difficult, but Cindy, I'm still hurting, but Cindy, and, um, I'm still depressed, but Cindy, I'm still being tormented, but Cindy, I'm still oppressed, but Cindy, I still have this addiction, but Cindy, I'm still barren, but Cindy, I know, I know, because all these things are talking to you, but every single thing that you need, it is already a done deal he declared the end from the beginning the lord has already given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness you can go to uh, second peter and you know he never lies I, I keep on telling you the same things he never lies he cannot lie he's not a man that he can lie if he tells you that by his stripes you were healed you were healed and I told you before, we're talking about healing, but it's not healing week. But I just pointed that out that whenever someone message, uh, 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 sends me an email, thank you for all the hearts, or messages me, or uh, we call on the phone, or we meet up or whatever, and I tell them, well, 2,000 years ago, you were already healed through the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. No one has ever jumped up and said, Woohoo! Yes, it means I'm healed. Not one, not one. And I, I always say that. And no one has ever said something about that. There was rejoicement or there was receiving it. They always, always tell me things like, yeah, but I'm still in pain. Yes, I know that, but yeah, but I know, I know, but. But you were already healed. The healing you need, it's already a done deal. You first need to receive it. You need to receive it and get rid of unbelief. I'm going to talk about unbelief in another session because I see unbelief is rampant among Christians. So you stay tuned uh, the next days that will follow. But I need you to understand it's a done deal. Is it grocery that you need, food that you need? Deuteronomy 8, the Lord has brought you into a happy, kind, right, better, prosperous, bountiful land, territory, district, region, origin, land, a land of pomegranates, of uh, yummy, sticky honey, of olive oil. You know, that talks about brightness, cleanness, and all those kind of things. All those things that are listed there in Deuteronomy 8, 
They deal with your grocery. They deal with your food. They deal with the things that you need. You take that word. You receive that word. And you will see your groceries in the name of Jesus. You receive it. I already told you about taking your authority. So if you want to know how to take authority, you go back and listen again. But there are scriptures in the word. So when you, when I say you need to receive it, I mean you need to receive the word above what you're feeling, what you're seeing, what you're hearing or not hearing, or what you're tasting or what you're smelling. Why am I telling you these things? Because if you stay in an unbelieving state, if you stay in looking into the natural, you cannot believe what I'm telling you right now. Even though I've given you proof, I've got a lot of proof and it's all from the Bible. You know, your success, your business, your uh, franchise, your um, inheritance that you want to leave to your grandchildren or your children, everything is already there. When you have that desire in your heart, guess what? Papa placed it there because he wants you to experience prosperous and great things. He loves you so much. He grants you your desires. You can read it in Proverbs 10, 24. He grants you your desires, meaning he bestows it upon you. He gives it to you. And the Lord tells us also in that Proverbs that the blessing of the Lord, it maketh you rich. And now a lot of people, there are against rich. Oh, don't, don't, Christian, don't be rich. Don't talk about prosperity, Cindy. Ah, uh, uh, no, 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 don't do that. Mm -mm, time out, Cindy. But listen to me. Jesus, the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians 8, 9, that though he was rich, wait a minute, who are you talking about? They're talking about Jesus. Though he was rich, rich as he was, he became poor. So you and I, through his poverty, might become rich. What do people do with that Bible verse? If you don't want Christians to be rich, well, I want to be rich because I want to give to people. That's my, that's, that's so in my heart. I want to go places and help children and build house, safe houses for women because I was one of the women that the Lord kept safe in one of those safe houses, you know? So I need the money to do those kind of things. That's why I have this ministry. I need uh, uh, money for books. You know, those kind of things. So all these things that I'm talking about, they come from the word. But everything is a done deal. Riches, wealth, prosperity, health, healing, success, and um, whatever you need, joy, love, peace, all those kind of things, happiness, every single thing that you need in your particular situation, it's already a done deal. The Lord has already provided for it. And then a lot of people will say, yeah, but did he provide for you to murder someone? Did he provide uh, so that I can get uh, my husband's uh, nephew or something? No, I'm not talking about that rubbish. I'm talking about the things that are according to the will of God. Because we know what the will of God is. Just find it in the word. Whatever it is that you need or want, go and find the scripture in the word. That's why I'm telling you the first thing you need to do is to receive. You need to receive the word. Stop the unbelief. Get rid of that unbelief. Sometimes stop watching television. Stop talking to certain people because they're always talking death and negative things and gossiping and criticizing and doing those kind of things. And it brings unbelief in your life. Stop certain things in your life and just get into that word. Find the scriptures that you need and that's how you receive it. Because then you can say, okay, Papa God, just, just. Let, let's just have a talk, Papa. Uh, Cindy told me that it's already a done deal. She told me about Genesis 1-1, that you already uh, declared the end from the beginning. Well, that's in Isaiah. But uh, she, she showed me that you have already placed everything in the word. That Jesus, the Son of God, would uh, um, is destroyed willingly by his own hands. But I don't receive the things. I, I don't see the thing. I know that by his stripes I were healed. But I don't see the healing manifestation. I'm still in pain. And then you can say, so Papa, show me. If there's something wrong with me, am I thinking something that is wrong? Show me and help me to receive it. You know, we need to receive the things of Papa God. I'm going to talk more about the receiving part. I just want to establish, I'm layering a cake. I'm layering a cake. So this is the first part 
that it's already a done deal. And just like I told you guys already a few days ago, I got so fed up with a certain situation in my church. I'm pastoring also a church. I have a ministry. I'm pastoring a church. And we couldn't find not one single rehearsal space. I don't have my own building, so we needed to find a space. There was no space. And I got so angry. And I said, how come Corona can speak? Because it's because of Corona that I couldn't find a rehearsal space because all of them are shut down and they got this and this and this. And then I said, no, because I knew that everything is already provided for. I needed a rehearsal space for me and the praise team and the band. So I knew it was already somewhere. I didn't know where it was. So when I spoke in authority, commanded the rehearsal space to be manifested, I did what the Lord told me to do. I received this word that told me that all things are possible to me, Cindy who believes. You see, I'm just taking the word and he wants me to prosper. And I'm prospering when I got my rehearsal place. So I took the word of the Lord. I received it. And then I was led by Holy Spirit what to do. I had to take my phone and I went to Google. I just typed in something and then I started calling. But one stood out. And when I called that one, they told me, oh, we couldn't, uh, uh, we're sorry, we had a uh, damage, a uh, water damage, so we are not available. But there is this, this and this person. And they gave me his name. I called him. He had a rehearsal space. And we go to rehearse on Wednesday. So that's great. But tell me, did Papa God need to build a rehearsal space for me? Did he have to do anything? No, the thing was already there. I just needed to see it. Remember what I told you about Abraham? Papa God said, look up. So everything that you need, look up. It's already there. Well, in the case of healing, healing is actually, it's already done deal. So you can get the manifestation actually very quickly. But a lot of times there are so many blockages and people, they don't believe it. It's too hard to believe it. I can get my manifestation while I'm sitting here. No, someone needs to pray for me. You see? And then they wait for someone to be prayed, uh, to get their prayer. So there's a, always a thought, always like a dominant thought. But in the case like of finances, I never talked about finances. There, we... The, the finances, they come through people or, you know, states or, or companies or those kind of things because money is not a thing from heaven. It's not that in heaven they got money, they're counting the money. So when you give your tithe somewhere, they're counting the money. Hey, Cindy didn't give enough tithe. No, they, they don't have money in heaven. They, it's a earthly thing. And it's money in this world that we need to do and buy and go. You know, with money, we can buy things and do things. So Papa God knows that. So when we ask him for grocery money or for money to buy a car or for money to give a gift to someone or for money to donate towards my books, just throwing it in there. The Lord God, you, you ask him and then you thank him for it. And then he provides it. But it comes via people. So a lot of times people never got their finances, never got the financial answer because it came through a person. And because they didn't know it, they stopped the flow themselves and said, oh, it's not coming. And I asked for it and it didn't came and it stopped the presses. It stopped the flow. But you, you're dealing with a person. And when dealing with a person, we don't have authority over people. He never gave us authority over people, but we have authority over the spirits because the spirits are subject to us. Luke 10, 19. So I can, you can speak against those demonic forces that keeping those people, preventing those people from giving to you. Or maybe it's me. I need to give someone like uh, 20 euros or something. Uh, it's just an example but there's no money in my pocket so i cannot give the 20 euros i want to do but i don't have it then that means that something is hindering me and because it's hindering me 
it's hindering you. You see how it goes? Like a domino effect. But when I have, I don't have money laying around, but just say this is money, just a card. Let's say this is money and someone gives me 50 euros. Now I can divide it or give you the 20 euros because now I have it to give to you. So money comes via people and then there can be hindrances because Satan, he can hinder people. Certain people, maybe they're afraid or they don't know you or they don't know if it's from God or whatever, or they don't have it, you know, whatever the case may be. So that's, that's the case for money. That was just a little rabbit trail. But I just want you to know today that everything is a done deal. Every single thing that you need, it's already provided for. Every single thing. If you don't believe me, go into the word. What is it that you need? Find a scripture for it. And if you can find it, it's in the word. If you find someone in the scripture, for instance, someone who is barren or has something with their womb and they want a child, they're married and they cannot have children. Listen to this. There are women in the word who had that problem and they got their child. If they can have it, that means it's, it's possible and it's already a done deal for Papa God. He says in his words, Exodus 23, uh, 26, 23, so we serve the Lord our God and his blessing is on our food and water. And he took sickness away from the midst of us and none shall be barren in your land. And you live a full lifespan. So people who have a lot of miscarriages, that is a great, great uh, Bible verse to stand upon, to take it and receive it and say, on account of this word, I receive it by faith in Jesus' name. No miscarriages for me because your word, it tells me something different. You see, it's already there in the word. It's already provided for. Someone already went through it. Hannah, Sarah, Rebecca. You see, there are a lot of women. So everything you need, find it in the Word. Yes, I'm going to leave it at this because I'm laboring something. And I know this is like a difficult subject. But be sure to tune in tomorrow because we're going to go step by step until you got it. Until it has set on the inside of you. And then nothing can stop you. Nothing can hinder you. Okay? Well, I'm going to uh, read what Stephanie said. Because Stephanie, uh, I didn't know if you were here at the beginning. But every single day, I want to... Uh, hey, Caroline. I want to... Uh, um, how do you say it? Light someone up who um, supports this ministry. And you were the one... Uh, uh, <laughs> that I light it up today. So you just go back and listen. Um, yeah, she wants to go on a vacation. And she doesn't know if she has to go or not. But she gets dreams to buy suitcases. Well, let me tell you. I have, I got different, uh, how do you say it? Different uh, vision boards. And on one of my vision boards, I also have uh, suitcases. And in my room, I have a suitcase so that I can see it. You know, I see it. So I know that the Lord, he also likes it if I, if I want to travel. So if you get the dreams to buy the suitcases, you buy the suitcase. Well, I know that I wanted to go to uh, Brazil on a mission trip. I didn't have the money. I, I didn't even have suitcases, nothing. And um, I had it in my heart. And I just went into my room. I still remember that moment. I stepped into my bedroom and I said in my heart, Papa, I really want to go on a mission trip. And what happened? I got the mission trip. They gave it to me as a present. But then, you know what I did? I bought a little, um, how do you say it? A pink suitcase. And people were telling me, no, I got a suitcase for you. No, I got a suitcase for you. But I felt in my heart to buy that suitcase. And I did. So I have that suitcase in my room. So if you got dreams for a suitcase, then you go and get the suitcases. It's just there was this lady and I love, love, love and, um, her story, her testimony. She wanted to get married. But it took years. She was in her 20s and she wanted to get married. She thought, well, 
Uh, I have dates. So one of these guys, he's the one. They were not the one. And she encountered a bad one. And then she just stopped dating. And then all of a sudden, people were telling her, Christian people were telling her, no, you shouldn't get married yet. Oh, you're hurting the Lord's heart by wanting to get married because he wants to have time alone with you, those kind of things. But she felt in her heart that she was supposed to be married. Now, a lot of things happened and then she entered a Bible study for singles. And there the lady said, if you have a desire to be married, you're supposed to be married. It was the first time and it clicked in her heart. She knew that that's for me. And then her pastor said, if you're single, it doesn't matter. And you want to get married, go buy your wedding dress. And you know what she did? She went and she bought the wedding dress. And within a few months, she was married. So get your suitcases. Um, and Sarah, the last night I was having lots of pain when trying to sleep. Okay, well, when you, uh, Sarah, this is for you, but it's for everyone. I know a lot of people, when they go to sleep, their sleep isn't sweet. But you go and get the word and the word tells you that he, uh, he lets you lie down in sleep and your sleep is sweet. Your sleep is, needs to be pleasant. He gives his beloved sleep. You can find all those Bible verses on sleep. And before you get to bed, watch what you're doing. Just check. Um, are you on the phone with someone? Did something trouble you? Those kind of things. If you cannot find it, okay. But if things are troubling you before you go to bed, stop those things. Don't do that. Get into the word before bed. Take these scriptures like medicine. Speak them out and that's how you receive it. And thank the Lord for your sweet and pleasant sleep. And you command that pain in the name of Jesus. Stop it. Pain, I command you stop and I command your sleep sweet in Jesus' name. So... What, whatever kind of pain it is, you speak against it. Because the Lord, I cannot find it in his word where he says, well, when you go to sleep, you can have pain. Or when you go to sleep, you have to be afraid. No Proverbs tells us that when we lie down, we're not afraid and our sleep is sweet. I had trouble sleeping when I got uh, the tumor because the tumor was growing on the inside of me and it was taking all, sucking up all the energy. So at night, I was laying down, but I was awake. And in the morning, I was tired. And it took me years to get out of that thing. But I just took the word. I didn't know at first how to receive it, how it worked. But then the Lord showed me. So before bed, you shouldn't have pain. So pain, get out in Jesus' name. So if there are more questions, and also uh, for Stephanie, there's also, I was thinking about that uh, Bible verse that you can use in Psalms. I, I love the word. I love Psalms. I love every, every Bible book. But in Psalms 1, he tells us in the message translation, I love the message translation also. And he tells us, uh, he says, you're my son. Well, he's also speaking to daughters. So you're his daughter. Today is your birthday, and you might say, no, today is not my birthday, but every day is our birthday because of the word. And then it says, what do you want? Name it. Uh, nations as a present, continents as a prize. You co can command them all to dance for you. Continents as a prize. You know, he asked you, what do you want? Name it. So you write the vision about going to the place you want to go, and you just see yourself going. You just see yourself being there on account of the word of the Lord. And he just wants you to prosper the desire of, of your heart. You can also use Proverbs 10, 24. So, hey, Amos, so nice to see you. How are you, little guy? <laughs> so great. Send in my love, Wilma. Well, I thank you so much for watching. And please... I know this subject was a little bit, it looks strange, but everything is already a done deal. Keep in mind, the provision is already here. Whatever, listen to me, whatever it is you need, it doesn't matter what it is. 
He has already provided it before he made every single thing. He said, light be. He spoke Jesus into being the true light and there was no star, no sun, no moon. And you know, there was a light. And he tells us in Revelation that we will not need a light because the Lord, he will be our light. So he's radiant. He is our light. That's already provided. Those things were already provided. So everything you need, it's already provided. He's detailed, people. He's, he loves you so much. He is just in his mind. That's why he sent his own son willingly on the cross to be devoured by his own hand. Because he said, oh, Cindy, Wilma, Stephanie, and, and name your own name. Place your own name in it. I want them to have this. I know she will gonna like this. I know they like pancakes with raspberries and honey on top of it. I'm gonna have somebody invent pancakes. I'm going to have raspberry just grow and she can just buy it. I'm going to provide for the, uh, for the money so she can buy the pancakes and the, you know, so he already provides. He's always like that. The ark of Noah, he didn't just tell Noah, Oh, go and build the ark. Yeah, no, whatever. Just build the ark. No, he gave the measurements. He gave what kind of wood he gave what kind of length and all those kind of things. And then the ark was there. Mo, uh, uh, Noah didn't have to go and plant a tree and then wait 20 years, 50 years until the tree had grown. No, the trees was alre were already there. Everything Noah needed was already there. The only thing that Noah had to do, he had to receive the word from God. That's what I'm talking about today. He had to receive the word from God. And that's why Noah, we can find him in the book of Hebrews 11, with all the faith legends, he's a faith legend because he did against all odds. He did what no one else did. He built an ark and it saved his life. But every single thing that he needed was already there. So let me leave it at this because otherwise I will go on. And tomorrow I'll be back with more on. It's already done. It's a done deal. So guys, if there are no questions, I'm going to wrap this up and I'm going to see you tomorrow. And thank you so much for all your support, for everyone watching. I speak a big, big blessing over you. Every vacation that you want to have, you go in the name of Jesus. I bless you with it. Every single sleep, I command it sweet in Jesus' name. Every person right now in pain, I command that pain. You stop it. I bind pain. I bind pain's mouth in Jesus' name. You shut up in the name of Jesus and leave and get out. And there's someone with ankles. There's something with your ankles. I don't know if your ankles are... Uh, uh, getting thick or something, but there's something with your ankles, a pain in your ankles. I command that pain in your ankles, you stop it. And I command firm muscles, strong bones in those ankles and that you can stand on a uh, good because I can see it's like wobbly so that you can walk normally in the name of Jesus. Maybe it's for none of you who are listening, but people will listen in the future. Then it's for someone else in Jesus name. But I command those ankles perfect function perfect in Jesus name. And I want to hear the praise reports in the name of Jesus. So well, guys, I see you tomorrow. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs>